Flippin' Steve here in the... And I'm going back to the future to film a video on Tuesday that you will not see until Friday. It's just another random video. I don't know what subject matter I'm going to talk about. I'm sure something will come up as the day always changes. I'll be looking for some deals. I actually sold a card this morning and I'll show you guys and tell you guys about that. And whatever comes up... Is this really the name of this dealer? The BBC Emporium? I'm going to go ahead and get this packaged up and run it to the post office. Anna Paquin... Sookie Stackhouse True Blood Autograph. Sold one of these in Atlanta for 250 bucks. Just sold this one on Instagram. Building that Anna Paquin True Blood Auto actually brings up some subjects that I would like to talk about uh, in, the, in the video. Come in, you know, with a blank slate. And that is, when you're buying cards to sell, buying cards to flip, and I'm not talking about collect, because again, collect what you want. But sometimes buying cards to sell involves you buying cards that you wouldn't necessarily like. I know the cliche is buy what you like and you'll always be happy, but that's not the case when you're trying to buy to resell. Because a lot of times people's taste varies so differently that something that you might like might be hard for you to resell. So one thing that I always think is very important is when you're is when you're buying to resell is, is, is you got to set yourself apart from everybody else. You got to have inventory. You got to have items that are different, that are refreshing, that a lot of people. Uh, don't sell, you know, to, to eliminate your competition. And I've talked about this in videos in the past, but I, I, I don't know if I've stressed it enough. Um, I set up at Culture Collision this year, and I did very, very well. Had a very good weekend set up as a dealer at a sports card show when 80% of my inventory was pop culture autographs. Now, I do a lot with the sports, and you guys see what I do with the sports. I've been doing it in all my videos this year, and I'm buying inserts and I'm buying quarterbacks. But again, it's the typical ones that other people aren't buying. You know, I'm buying, I'm not buying the downtowns. I'm not buying the kabooms. I'm not buying the stuff that's super popular, like the color blast. And I'm not chasing the same quarterbacks that everybody is after. I'm trying to do something different to keep my inventory different, to keep my inventory fresh, and to have the items that the other people don't have just in case something happens in the market that causes it to swing on the things that I'm holding. Aside from the sports, one, things I've always, one thing I've always liked to do is to look at the pop culture autographs because they're fairly cheap. In fact, I bought two of those Anna Paquin autographs last year around October for $125 each off eBay. I then spent 15 bucks to get them graded with SGC. So I was into each for 140, so that's 280. I sold one for cash in Atlanta for 250 and the other one on Instagram just now for 205. So you do that math where I was 280 in on both of them and I just got what 455 out of both of them. So that's a really really good percentage return on a card in such a short period of time. And I just went into that post office and the line in there was longer than anything that you would buy at the BBC Emporium. Distress. I'm not telling you guys what to do, what to buy, how to spend your money. I'm just saying if you are buying cards to resell, just think outside the box every now and then. Don't buy the typical same things that everybody else is buying uh, to sell because when you go to sell, you're going to have so much competition. And you may look at a card and you might be like, man, I don't know if anybody would want to buy that card. But back to the phrase of people buy what they like. Think about that. People buy what they like, and it doesn't necessarily always have to be sports cards. For me, I like music cards, and I collect music cards. In fact, Cousin Rock allowed me to borrow his Led Zeppelin t-shirt today. I was wearing it earlier. I'll be wearing it later. Um, but other people out there, they like certain TV shows. They like uh, movies. They like actors and actresses and music and things like that. Things of different genres other than sports cards. People just don't eat, breathe, sleep, shit, sports cards. 24 7 they have other things in their life that they enjoy and cards is one of them but if you can relate something else that somebody really enjoys and feels an attachment to other than sports in their life and you can put that on a card which is something that they enjoy from the sports card hobby it just meshes for like a, a perfect collectible for somebody and that's key because these types of cards that I'm talking about they tend to be cards that people buy for their collections and that's most important because you get premium dollar for them because people want them. They don't want them to resell them. So they're not looking for meat on the bone. They're looking to take that card and stash it because it means something to them. And, you know, when the collectors are gone in sports or anything, there is no one to sell to. So, again, be open-minded on some of your purchases when you're buying the flip and be like, hey, 
there's more opportunity out there than just what I see directly in front of me that's shoved in my face. It's the stuff that's refreshing. It's the stuff that you dig up. It's the nuggets that you find that a lot of times can be most beneficial uh, when you're trying to profit on flipping. Today is one of my days off, guys, so it's one of my kind of a cheat day. I can eat more liberally. You good boy. Show mommy how the piggies eat. <laughs> There's this Puerto Rican uh, bakery and restaurant here in my town. I'm going in here to get some food. Man, it's going to be amazing. How's it taste, mother? <laughs> We're gonna swing over to my slab really quickly. There's a card over here that I've been interested in and I made a sale earlier, so I might throw an offer at this. I have thrown an offer of 390 and it was not accepted. So I believe that the seller will take 400 though because this same card is also listed on eBay at 430. So when you deduct out the fees, eBay fees from 430 bucks, the seller would be netting like 400-ish. So I believe a $400 offer will work here. This is a Touchdown Masters 2020 insert. I believe it's the first year the Touchdown Masters were made. It's definitely the best design from the past couple of years. And these inserts are not rare by any means. They're inserted in the packs pretty frequently. However, this one is the gold fluorescent, which is numbered out of 20. And this is number 15, which is Patrick Mahomes jersey number. So when you talk about targeting collectors, collector specific card, because it is rare, it's very eye appealing, and it's also his jersey number and it's already slabbed. So this might not be the kind of card that really, really has high liquidity as far as making a profit if I was to make a $400 offer here. But to the right person, I would probably be able to get $550 to $600, maybe even more for it. Um, I am going to go ahead and make an offer. And another thing that makes me comfortable with this offer is if I look at uh, recent comps, there's only one. And it was in a PSA 9, if we see on 130point.com, it went for about 340 bucks. So that's in a lesser grade at about 25 to 30%, even more to a PSA 9, uh, maybe 50% to a PSA 9 for a BGS 9.5. And also take into account, not only is this the jersey number, but this is also post Super Bowl. That other one sold on February 11th, which was prior to the third Super Bowl victory. So we're going to go ahead and put in this, uh, this offer for 400 Again, just giving you guys my thought process when I go to make an offer on a card, everything that runs through my head. I don't really think that there's much room for this card to drop, but there is upside to it. We got in five packages today. I believe I can fly. First package, Kyler Murray, 2019 rookie downtown in a BGS pristine 10. Enough said, I will talk about this in a video more in depth. Card number two, Trey Lance, select silver. Nothing super special about this in a PSA 10. $21 pickup. If they even like utter his name or breathe his name in Dallas, this will double in value and it'll be a quick flip. Unfortunately, card number three here, this checkerboard Justin Fields rookie, has great corners, great centering, great edges, but it has some surface flaws. It's got some light on it here. Let's magnify it. And you can see there's a Little scratch right there on the black checker. Surface dimple right there. Maybe down here. This could PSA 9, I'm not sure. It's gonna all depend on whether or not the grader gets some booty before going to work. I got fingerprints all over this thing. I should be wearing gloves. I have to two, use two microfibers. Hold the card with one. Just make sure I get my fingerprints off the edges. Just careless by me. Should be using some sort of protection on my hands. After grading out that Justin Fields card, I figured I'd meet one of my friends downtown for a drink, just had a beverage. Quick update on the Patrick Mahomes on my slabs. That deal did close, so 400 bucks, as you can see right here. Closing a deal while I'm out with my friend. We're gonna go grab some food. 
since I'm here at the specialist to get my foot finally looked at, if you remember Das Boot from Atlanta, been having foot issues since the beginning of January. So I've just been toughing it out here to finally figure out what's wrong. And uh, I also have two packages that came in yesterday that I still haven't uh, shown. We'll get to those. And my mail hasn't arrived for today, so there might be more on top of that. Just had the quickest x-ray in the existence of x-rays. Say that 10 times fast. Um, while I'm sitting here, I guess I'll just browse some platforms. Let's we'll swing on over to the Figgity Fee Bizzle real quick. I'm watching this Kevin Costner, Crash Davis. I want this for the PC autograph. I have the Tim Robbins. This goes off sometime tonight. If it doesn't go too high, I'm very interested in that one. And then the Aaron Rodgers case hit in a Jets uniform. I think there's some potential there, so I'm also watching that one. What I really want to look at is what ended last night. Patrick Mahomes, Optic. Mythical case hit, the Black Pandora out of 25. This going for 225 actually seems like a good price if it grades out. Even in a nine, I feel like that's a good price. Uh, and we'll go to the Patrick Mahomes Silver Select, the card that I want to get my hands on because I like the value of it. I'm more of a buyer at 800 bucks. So I'd probably have to get this in person. So we went for 855, which is which is fine. And then three purchases that I had: a Regis Philbin, Tops Allen and Ginter Auto. Picked that up for 70. It was priced at 100. Another Allen and Ginter. I got this one for 58 bucks, and it was priced at like 100. This is Pete Weber, the popular bowler. You know, just thinking outside the box a little bit. I don't just talk about it. And then uh. A Tom Brady insert. This is a Panini Legacy Under the Lights Gold. It's numbered out of 20, and it's in a PSA 10, and it's only a Pop 3. And this was listed for 275, and I was able to get it for 125 after offering 100, being countered at 150, settled at 125. So again, I think that that's a can't lose card with the rarity, with the pop, with the color, you know, the gold, and it being Tom Brady at 125 bucks already slabbed. Just don't think I could. Uh, you you can beat that for a deal. Last card I want to talk about, this Justin Fields Gold Optic, which was reconsigned by DC Sports after it looked like on the last auction was a non-paying bidder at $2,200. This time goes for $23 with 72 bids, and it might have had like 60 bids last time. We'll check the bid history on it. 16 bidders and 72 bids. That's a lot of bids. You see a lot of zeros in here. You got Y-M00. Dash dash a legit bid, it looks like 50, 1574 and a winner at 287 But you got some zeros in there from this yum yum person, Y dash dash M, running this thing all the way up from the beginning, all the way starting back at a thousand bucks and then plugging away here at the end. Uh, looks like running it up. Someone may be a legit buyer there, but they got ran up by somebody. So we'll see if this gets paid again or, or if the buyer decides to pass again just because they might check the bid history and be like, man, I got shilled. It's a nice card, but not at that price. I'm gonna wrap this video up with the last two pickups from the mail. If you wanna see the cards before they hit YouTube, go follow me on Instagram, flipping underscore Steve. I also got a little code, I think it's 3DBE, something like that. I'll put it right here for Veriswap where you can get $15 credit towards your fees and shit like that. So go over there, get some terrible deals offered your way and just laugh at it and have fun. Also, from the doctor, I got a steroid pack. <laughs> it's actually not going to do anything like that. It's just going to help my heel uh, heal up a little bit so the doctor can take a better look at it in a couple weeks. Let's take a look at the cards. Justin Fields Select Red, numbered out of 99. This was a $100 buy it now purchase. A purple just went for $140, so liking the value there. These Select Starcade case hits that I've really been digging. Got a Lamar Jackson. I'm not a big proponent in Lamar Jackson or his cards, but people are, so I'll be looking to flip this in a PSA 10. Super low pops. Can't remember off the top of my head. I'll post it over there. And don't forget, you are awesome. I'm sorry. It was just me. I didn't mean to scare you.